Hello, friends. This is Harosha Scheib with a, another episode um, of, Her of F Society RSC podcast. Um, I'm the moderator of this chat, and I'm here to talk about theories. Theories, theories, theories. Um, there's been two episodes of the third season. Uh, season one, the premiere, was uh, Power Saver Mode. And then we had the second episode called Undo. And so there's been, I would say, enough meat on the bone to talk about some of these theories that have been bantering around um, the ro Mr. Robot community for a while about the universe, as well as emergence of some new theories or some new ideas of my own that are not necessarily being talked about as much as maybe they should. So let's kind of get into it. Uh, first off, RIP, the ultimate MacGuffin, uh, the Washington Township plant. Um, maybe it still is. Um, in the MacGuffin, you can still show it and display it. The whole point of it is to move the plot along. And in a sense, the Washington Township plan is doing that with the whole concept of stage two. Uh, the fact that um, White Rose, our minister Zong, wants the Washington Township plant, the machinery that Elliot's father helped create, uh, which uh, my understanding from the different posts is like a hydrogen collider or some something to that extent. We're not really absolutely positive or certain what exactly is in the Washington Township plant, but they did show it. Um, Maltese Falcon was shown in that movie, so it, it, it still might be there, but I think, it, I think that theory's gone. Um, it was good while it lasted, but uh, I do think it's not an accident in the, uh, that uh, Pulp Fiction was mentioned or shown in the series, and I'll get back to that in a moment. I just kind of want to finish my thoughts about the Washington Township plant. Uh, basically, you know, it's a bargaining chip that Philip Price and White Rose have been bantering back back and forth over the past couple decades. It ties into the Congo Annex, it ties into this UN vote, and it ties into our ticking time clock of 11 days, as well as, you know, stage two and all that. So it might still be there. Um, I'm not positive, if you will. Um, but we'll see. But I don't want to talk about particularly necessarily that theory per se, but um, I will address the Washington Township plant again when talking about the Congo Annex. But I want to talk about some of the most popular theories that are um, part of the Mr. Robot series. Uh, one of them is the parallel universe, time travel, and the robot chip program. So these things are things that have been um, discussed or talked about since season one. Um, and then kind of added depth during season two and now season three some of them have um, morphed merged with other theories or have been refined and one is like the parallel universe we saw this discussed um, by Angela when she talked about Elliot in her apartment how what if all this could be undone what if you know the 5-9 hack the um, um, their parents' death, if they could all be taken back, Elliot called her crazy. Some people say that's an affirmation of time travel, they could undo this. White Rose talk, talks about time all the time. She spoke when the first meeting between her and Elliot, she hacks time. Time has meaning. She, Everything is timed in her existence, if you will, monitored. Uh, Dom, when she met Dom, she talked about time there and the power of time, if you will. Um, and Sam Ismail addressed this whole concept of time travel. You know, you have the Back to the Future 2 influence on the show that's um, Elliot's favorite movie. And that has to do with time travel. And I have a link into the article where he discussed time travel and says that that is not a valid theory. Uh, he believes as a writer, um, time travel, you know, changes the show, um, kind of makes it dead, if you will. Uh, it's not the direction they're going for. But he does talk about parallel universes, which was somewhat mentioned in um, in universe in the initial um, showing in the Washington Township plant, where you had a worker talking about the concept of a parallel universe and how there's different copies or versions of us in the universe. And he stated that White Rose has this belief about parallel universes, about parallel existence. And the, maybe perhaps the Washington Township plant is associated with that. And some people have had that particular theory going on for a while, um, which ties kind of a little bit into the time travel aspect of the show. 
So the time travel theory is kind of dead. Though there are some people that still believe in it just because of the nature of the show and how it's uh, an unreliable narrator and we don't really know what's going on. We're, we're shown one thing and then it reveals to be something else. We don't we don't see the entire picture. So some people still believe in that. Um, I think because Sam Esmail has stated that it's dead, it's dead. Uh, though the parallel universe thing is a very interesting concept. Um, and I guess you could say the Washington Township or whatever that machinery is might tie into all that. And that remains to be seen. So that is, you know, gaining some steam in the um, theory uh, part of those who participate in that aspect of discussion the show on Mr. Robot, about Mr. Robot. Now the whole robot ship program, that is something that's been around for a while. Some people believe that, you know, Elliot or Angela are actually androids, that maybe they have a chip in their head. That's why um, Elliot has a split personality. Maybe when he got pushed out of the, the window, that's when the chip was installed that uh, both he and Angela are being programmed. Something is kind of like ties to the MK, MK Ultra type of deal, which was a CIA program to program people and figure out how to break people. And to that extent, to some extent, um, some believe that's why Elliot has a kind of a superhuman-esque ability to hack, because uh, he's not completely human. And um, that kind of ties into Krista, about Krista being his handler. I'm not so sure about that, the whole chip program, or even the programming of Elliot himself by other people. I do think Elliot programs himself. So we already seen that displayed when he didn't remember his sister and the fact that he removed or edited certain aspects of his life. Um, I think I'll eventually talk about that with the relationship between him and Darlene. Um, not this particular episode for theories, but maybe just more onto the nature of the character of Elliot, talking about the three faces of Elliot, if you will. Um, revisit to that particular episode. Um, I think I'll link that into the, the show notes as well, that um, particular podcast episode. But I do think that maybe there might be self-programming on Elliot's part, but I don't think there is actually robot programming or programming in the, in the sense that both Angela and Elliot are some kind of uh, ultimate um, programmed people that are tools for the Dark Army or tools for E-Corp, if you will. And they have no agency or control of their existence. Um, I just don't think it fits within the narrative of the show, but it's a very fascinating, interesting theory. And um, I'll bring it up again when I talk about Krista, why that, that theory may still carry on um, when we talk about Krista. But I just wanted to talk about some of the more popular theories that are um, surfacing within the Mr. Robot community, those that are still existing and those that are kind of dead. Um, so let's talk about Krista. Um, I tweeted very early on in the pro promoing of the uh, upcoming season three of Mr. Robot that Krista needs to get out. I talked about that um, in my review of the second episode of season three called Undo. I think Krista's days are numbered. I think because she has seen Mr. Robot, or at least spoken to Mr. Robot, I think because she is actually the only true real person that wants to help Elliot, that's there for Elliot. We've seen this episode, this season, everyone's uh, manipulating um, Elliot. You know, Mr. Robot manipulates Elliot. Um, Angela's manipulating Elliot. Uh, Darlene, to some extent, is manipulating Elliot because she has that deal with the FBI. Um, not everyone has their best interest when it comes to Elliot. Not even Elliot to himself, to some extent, because of the lies he tells himself. And I think Krista is the only person in this universe, is the only person on this show that actually truly wants to help Elliot, and that's going to be to her detriment and to her, to her downfall. I don't believe um, that is a theory that Krista is his handler, that she's there to monitor not only Elliot, but Mr. Robot as well, and to help, as Angela put it in the, the season premiere episode, to push Elliot along on the program, either being hired by Dark Army or another agency or a group that we haven't seen, or uh, even Mr. Robot to some extent, that uh, she's there to compel or propel or monitor Elliot and keep the dissociative personalities going. That she's there to help trigger and and handle them. I don't think that's the case. I think she is what we've been generally seeing, which is that she's there to help Elliot. And I understand how there's a lot of misdirection in that, particularly with uh, season two or the prison turnaround where, you know, Elliot was showing us um, 
his sessions with Krista that he wasn't really having sessions in her office that she was having they were having him out in the open in the prison um, visitor room that um, what has been revealed due to the um, extra material that Mr. Robot's um, television programs put out called the Red Will Barrow book which is the journal that Elliot was writing in um, in universe you can purchase that and read that and in that it, it states that he told Krista his story about being pushed by his father but given the unreliableness of Elliot um, I question that because she seemed genuinely shocked that Elliot's father pushed him out of the window and Elliot swears he, he told her and the thing about Elliot because he likes to forget things um, his memories I think are blurred for certain incidents, incidences that maybe he thinks he told Krista but he actually didn't tell Krista so I understand why people have some doubts about Krista how she's either lying to him or is another person in the universe that manipulates Elliot I can understand why people believe that I think that's a misdirection I think she is probably like I stated earlier the only person in Elliot's life that truly cares about Elliot that wants to help Elliot knows that Elliot's a very sick person and wants to help him get better to stay on medication to be in therapy to be his true self to deal with this split dissociated personality either merge it back into his real personality or at least have a handle on, on his condition and um, again I think that's gonna lead to her downfall because there's um, Mr. Robot that's not gonna want that he thinks that Krista is a hindrance to getting Elliot to get back on the plan and get back on the mission for one I think that the office or either her home office or the real office uh, I, I think Dark Army is very aware of the fact that Elliot um, is seeing somebody has a ther uh, therapy sessions they may not know to the extent of his split personality but they are aware that he's talking to somebody they might in that relationship because it might be a hindrance to either stage two or to whatever plans they may have going on so there's that factor um, yeah, I wish she would, she would just pack a bag and go. I like that character. I like that ar actress, Gloria Rubin. But I think her days are numbered. And, I th and again, I just want to reiterate, I don't think she's a handler, Elliot. I think she's what we've been seeing is a therapist that is there to help her patient. A very troubled patient that is part of this very um, extra-worldly type of activity, as well. Um, that the, the fantasies that a lot of patients have about being part of something bigger or greater or grander or, um, delusions if you will of grander are, are not actually delusions of grander they're actually reality and when she comes to that realization I think that's when um, things were going to end for her unfortunately so I just want to address that and I also want to address the Red Wheel Barrel book I highly recommend getting it it's a great read it's a little fascinating just kind of seeing the the um, extent of the in you know in universe usage and stuff and how detailed um, Mr. Robot is when it comes to these things uh, we see that with the e-coin um, marketing where you can get like these power packs and the dots and things of that nature um, we see it we saw that with the ARG game that they're doing is still doing they did it for the first season the second season and now there's another round of it um, all the little hints and websites are out there for you to participate if you wish to um, on that level um, a number of shows have done this I think Lost has done this um, I think they're really the more modern version of that we're the first company to do that you see that other companies doing that as well I think the the latest thing I've seen is you know Westworld for television and movie wise um, the upcoming Steven Spielberg um, Ready Player One they have a little ARG game going on with the promotion for that film and so it's interesting to see that something that's been part of television part of movies and promotions you know Star Wars is no notorious for this and Star Trek to some extent um, popularized and allowed for these extra things that fans will buy like books and merch and stuff like that being tied so heavily into the television series and um, have my meaning and manner um, I think is very good and fascinating and just another avenue of entertainment for people okay so stage two um, I want to state this that you know I know Elliot is trying to prevent stage two I still think it's gonna happen I think he's gonna fail uh, 
But I wanted to note that with the stage two, putting all the paper records, we know that 17 out of 71 um, facilities have already submitted their paperwork. I don't think for Dark Army's plan to work, or even for you know F Society's plan to work, that all the paper records that are in the possession of E Corp have to be destroyed. I think enough of them have to be destroyed to take down the company. Just imagine a blowing up of a building that possesses the paper records and it gets out like that. After already after the hack, um, the global inflation that is discussed um, in universe with the E Coin trying to become the new global currency. Um, that is enough to not only be detrimental to Evil Corp or E Corp as a company, but also the economy, economy as a whole. That's why the threat of destroying those paper records is enough to put pressure on Philip Price to um, negotiate the UN um, annexation of Congo to China. And we'll get into that next. But I think what Elliot may be not fully realizing is in order for the plan to work, not all the records have to be in there. Just enough, enough to cause a catastrophe, enough to cause a collapse of the company, enough to halt eCoin, or in the case of what White Rose wants, to um, put Philip Bryce's head on a plate, if you will. So I wanted to note that. And it's tied into the Congo annexation. Um, this was brought up kind of almost like an afterthought. It was like the end scene credit of season one where Wright Rose wanted to bring up the Congo on the day that the 5-9 the hack was going on and all that. And then the death, if you will, that um, wasn't the day of the 5-9 hack, but the aftermath, uh, the three days after uh, the death of that um, CEO who blew his head off. Um, this is very important and it has to do with mineral resources, it has to do with cobalt. Um, I, have a link, I have a link in the show notes to the theories and the articles going on in here. Um, but what cobalt is, is a material for nuclear fusion. I've spoken about cobalt as a possible theory for the Washington Township plant, how it could be used for either power resource or potentially, you know, nuclear bombs. Um, again, we don't know exactly what is being developed in the Washington Township plant in and of itself. We don't know exactly what um, cobalt, um, that material, has anything to do with the Washington Township plant, but we do know, as stated at the end of uh, the second episode, is that the plan was to move the Washington Township, the machinery, to, to, to the Congo for, for the purpose of getting the material or the room or the space, but for whatever purpose, to be there. And that's why China needed Congo's annexation. Now, I know a lot of people have been talking about that the UN doesn't have the power to approve the annexation of the Congo. But given that the global inflation, that economy is tanked, the people are very tense, people are afraid of either war breaking out or riots or the absolute collapse of their economies or countries, that things like the annexation of Congo, these kind of geopolitical things are not a priority. And also that if you think of just historically speaking, this isn't something that's happened before, it happened recently. Look at um, what Russia did with Georgia. They're still in Georgia right now. Um, Ukraine with the, the annexation of Crimea and the tensions between Turkey, Ukraine, and Russia on that, how people have just pretty much allowed that to occur and exist and that there's been no warfare over this matter. But there are certain places and battles people pick to actually go over war over and unfortunately when it comes to Gong the Congo, the world is not going to go to war over Congo. Um, that's just pretty much the state and the history of the continent of Africa as a whole. It's been it's uh, abuse and misuse by the different geopolitical powers, primarily from the West, but now China. Um, currently, as we speak, China's in Africa and the exploitation of different mineral, mineral resources for their manufacturing and economic power is ongoing. Uh, Russia, U.S., you know, Western powers, all the, the big geopolitical powers when it comes to the continent of Africa and the various countries in there being always bounced around with the IMF and and colonization, post-colonization, recolonization, and all that. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible situation. And so it's not shocking to me or surprising that this is something that would happen in in universe and something that has some historical precedence in different manners and different shapes and forms in history. So I'm not particularly bothered by that. That's something I think that would, something the UN would do. It would be something that would happen to appease if it means that China signs the 5-9 uh, accord and gets e-coin as a global currency. Um, 
The other thing is the fact that the White Rose will continue Stage 2. That Stage 2 was never actually was supposed to be implemented. It was a bargaining chip, a pressure point on Philip Price to get what China wanted, what White Rose wanted, which was the Washington Township plant in the Congo. And to destroy Stage 2, to actually destroy the ability for E Corp, which uh, in universe is basically the center of everyone's financial um, power, if you will, would start a war. It would start a war. I mean, Philip Price used the language of war when he talked about um, the, during the G20 summit about China not signing the accord, that they're already starting a currency war. So that language is already out there. Um, that they're backing up Bitcoin, which is considered an illegitimate currency. Um, to have that type of, type of action would only be something like a nation state would do. And to blame it on F society wouldn't be sufficient to prevent a war from occurring. Um, so it would be interesting to see if that actually happens. If internally within White Rose, that maybe she's overextended her power reach with stage two of actually implementing the plan within 11 days if the vote goes their way or if it doesn't go their way to do that that maybe that not something that, the, that her higher ups might want so it'll be interesting to see what the assistant does because he did want to um have control of stage two and he doesn't it's still in elliot's and tyrell's hands but he was very flummox if you will that white rose still want to do it um we'll we'll see how that plays out there is a time clock we know that within 11 days stage two is supposed to be implemented the congo vote is supposed to happen so that now that we have a time clock like it's ticking there's a significant amount of pressure that's going to be going on for the rest of the season i think there's 10 episodes this season um so seven more episodes to go on with this happening. And so it'd be interesting to see how this all, all the chips lay out for that. Um, that's all I have to say on that. I still think stage two is going to happen. I just, I'm not sure to what extent it will happen. If it will be a full blowout. If some of the records are destroyed, some of the buildings are destroyed, full blowout. It, it will be interesting to see. Um, the other thing which kind of ties into stage two is the something that Elliot had mentioned when he tried to wrangle E Corp, you know, try to make it not an evil corporation, but something can contain, an evil that can be contained and harnessed for good, was that he couldn't decrypt the um, server files um, that are encrypted. So they still have the server files, but they can't access the information. That's why they're rebuilding their database with paper records. Um, now there's records in the States and there's records in China. And we know from the ending of season two in the end note that Trenton and Mulby might be able to recreate the decryption keys and be able to undo the five nine half, which is something that Elliot is trying to do to prevent stage two and help with the recovery effort. But actually being able to decrypt the digital files would seriously help and cause undo some of the economic turmoil and, and pause some of this global inflation and the the um, misery that the people are having. We saw this and Elliot discussed it in his speech in season um, the, the, the first episode and we've been seeing it in the background since since the hack since season two the, the, since the hack there was like riots going on and then um, we saw the slow decay in season two, and now it's a full-blown decay going on, and equines everywhere, and there's a global inflation, and the value of the dollar is just <laughs> tanked, um, and people are losing, they're homeless, they're losing their homes. Again, I'm surprised there hasn't been outright violence or the National Guard being called in, but that might be something that's coming up. We already know that resources are very taxed that even the government workers don't have the economic means to do their basic stuff, yet they're still supposed to do, go to work and um, investigate murders and crimes and things of that nature. We saw that kind of a little bit hinted in the background with Dom's conversation with uh, the IT guy at the safe house. So with that in mind, I think the reason why Leon is with Trinity and Moby is because once she's, they're part of F Society's team, White Rose won doesn't like loose ends um, their ability to decrypt 
that information um, could be a hindrance to her plans or can enhance her plans because if she controls the Chinese servers by decrypting the Chinese servers she now owns evil Corp. she owns the world's economy if you will China does so even if they sign the accord you know the equine Accord, and then decrypt the um, evil corpse files that means the global economy can get back to back to order and now they have a strong say in ecoin they control the global economy and now they're the you know official superpower i think that's kind of like the government overarching plan um as far as personal pettiness that white rose is kind of showing um being able to control evil corp completely um you know, being able to decrypt those those files in China would take it, put price down a notch, if you will, take them out completely. Um, then again, Trenton and Moby being able to decrypt that might also still be a hindrance. They may not want that. They may want Bitcoin to be the coin, or for everyone to um, collapse and China be able to rise as the number one superpower, much like. Uh, the U.S. did after um, World War II because they were basically the only shop still functioning, really. Um, that could be the case with this global collapse where China is the only shop that's still running and thus uh, is going to dictate the economic um, direction in the world for the next century, if you will. So it would be interesting to see how that plays out. As it can go two ways. You know, they're taking out, Leon does it, or they start working whether they realize they are not for the dark army to decrypt these um, files, and it will come, it will come down to whether or not Elliot is able to realize they still live, are alive, what they're doing, and if he's able to um, help them, rescue them, or participate in some fashion. So that'd be interesting. That's something that's not really being fully discussed at this point, and it might be the fact that we haven't seen Leon, Trenton, and Moby yet. Uh, there's only three episodes in. The third episode is supposed to be focused on Tyra Wellock and his time um, away from the show, if you will, in season two. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see when they pop up, if they pop up this season at all. Um, okay, and then finally, this is something that's been bothering me since season one. And now that we have some really concrete confirmation that um, White Rose knew who Elliot's father was, that Elliot's father... Um, participate in the development of whatever it is in the Washington Township plant that Elliot doesn't know that White Rose is Minister Song. Um, I find that very hard to believe whether it be Elliot himself or the Mr. Robot personality. I think that needs to be addressed in the show um, because if I, I wouldn't I don't think Elliot had, because he wanted to take down E Corp because what they did to his father and the fact of what they're doing to the world, that he would align with himself with somebody that was one, um, as he spoke about Dark Army, they just work for anybody, so they're mercenaries and they're not very good people. And that he would work for somebody that actually helped participate in the death of his, of his father and the downfall of his family. That he's unaware of this. So, it all comes down to exactly how much information Elliot has about his father's relationship to the Washington Township plant beyond the fact that he worked there and he died because he worked there. Um, if he's unaware, if he's unaware that White Rose is also Minister Song, um, that's a gap they have to kind of um, address. Now, if he is aware, then it means that this plan the stage two and taking down E Corp. Um, I kind of stated this in some of my theories last season that using the Dark Army to take down E Corp could also be like taking two enemies to take each other out. Even if he is aware or not aware that they also kind of colluding with one another in the background there, using this five nine hack to their advantage for their machinations that they've already had in place. Um, Maybe he's aware of that and has factored into his plan is and demonstrated that Elliot and Mr. Robot are pretty damn good um, strategists and have an understanding of the human condition and how to manipulate people and are able to counter a lot of different um, obstacles that have been put in their place. They have a very flexible thinking, if you will. But if he doesn't 
um, know this. I think Angela still has a key into this where because she has those Washington Township plant documents still, I don't think she gave them to White Rose or at least has seen those documents, that revealing that information to Elliot, if he's unaware, will change things and change his motivations and his work for Dark Army. Because if he is aware, then he's using Dark Army to take out E Corp and also in some fashion, in some way, take out take out E Corp at the same um, Dark Army at the same time and Minister Zhang at the same time, um, put, pitting these two great armies at each other and then having them take each other out in a sense. Um, I think that might be a plan. It might be a factor in the plan, um, but they have to explain that because it's it's been bugging me for a while that it hasn't been properly addressed, and now we know the depth of White Rose's attachment to to the Washington Township plant, Elliot's father's attachment to the Washington Township plant, they need to somehow address that in the universe, whether or not Elliot knows these things. If he's aware of Minister Zhang's identity and, and the White Rose's part, if you will, um, in the Washington Township plant. Because if he doesn't, then Angela having those documents comes back to play and would heavily influence Elliot in some sense of being aware uh, that his father built the machine, that his father, this is the reason why his father died, and that Minister Zong slash White Rose had a hand in that and then he's going to want to take the Dark Army out um, or the White Rose out, you know, personally, if you will. Um, other than that, that's all I pretty much have except for this little tidbit about Pulp Fiction. So Pulp Fiction, 20 year old movie, has been out there for a while, it was mentioned in Universe as a movie that he, Elliot and his father saw. Uh, in, every, in Universe is where I got my concept of the ultimate MacGuffin as something that Pulp Fiction is known for. Um, it's where I kind of attach my theory about the Washington Township plant. You know, I don't think Sam Ismail puts either posters or songs or movies or mentions without them having some significance either played out this season, next season, um, or during that season in, in the show. And so another thing about Pulp Fiction um, that's also discussed about the, um, the movie in itself, which if you're unfamiliar, you know, 20-year-old movie, you can find it on streaming services. It stars Bruce Willis, John Travolta, Samuel Jackson, um, Uma Thurman, directed and written by Quentin Tarantino is, is the movie that launched his career. Um, it's one of the movies he's still well known for. A lot of um, your average moviegoers really love it. It's not his best movie. I think his best movie is Inglorious Bastards of his writing directed movies. But his overall career-wise movie is Jackie Brown, which he directed but didn't write. And his best written movie, I think, is True Romance, which he wrote but did not um, direct. That was Tony Scott. But um, it is the concept of God and belief. It's something that um, Vince Vega, played by John Travolta, and I forgot what Samuel Jackson's character's names, have this conversation about um, in the opening sequence of Pulp Fiction. They get shot at. And you've probably seen the meme or the gift where there's like these bullets in the background. They're standing in their shoots, and a guy sh just unloads on them. And there's a bunch of bullet holes behind them but not through them and Samuel Jackson's character takes that as a sign a miracle from God that maybe he needs to stop doing what he's doing Vince Vega thinks it's just a coincidence a quirk it's just one of those things that happens and so it becomes the whole running theme one of the running themes of the the movie is about belief and the belief of things and those who believe will live and those who don't don't swipe Vince Vega spoiler alert John Travolta's character dies um, that's why um, Samuel Jackson character kind of leaves because he can lives. All the different little stories that these are, the movies based on these vintages or chapters um, have this kind of belief structure in it. And maybe that might have some kind of like thematic influence on the show. Um, there's about a whole concept about beliefs and believing in the different things and different higher powers and purposes that are discussed in Pulp Fiction and in a way has a heavy influence on Mr. Robot, particularly between the character of Mr. Robot and Elliot um, about beliefs and, be and believing the different causes and you know, appealing to higher authority, 
and consequences and, and things of that action and other characters' beliefs and their belief structures. So that might be the one of the reasons why Pulp Fiction was mentioned in the universe of Mr. Robot. Um, or it could be the MacGuffin thing. Still, I'm kind of not really letting that go, but uh, who knows. But those are my thoughts. Those are the kind of theories that are out there. Those are my personal theories were like the last two about Trenton Mulby and Leon and just this nagging thing about White Rose slash Miniature Zong and does Elliot slash Mr. Robot know of her position and her um, purpose or function when it comes to the Washington Township plan. So that's it. Um, thank you for listening and I'm logging off for now and till next time friends.